How's it going airsofters? The Scope Cam Plus is the latest in the line of airsoft scope cams by Runcam. So what makes the Scope Cam Plus stand out from what's already available on the market today? Well, the most obvious is the claimed battery life of six hours. This is a bold claim. So let's put that claim to the test. Let's hit record. And we are recording. With that lengthy runtime, a large internal battery is needed, and the Scope Cam Plus is quite obviously larger than its predecessor. It's almost like stepping back to 2015 when Norbridge was using a Canon camcorder for a Scope Cam. The Scope Cam Plus weighs in at 315 grams. Yes, that is quite a bit of weight to have on your rifle, but remember, this thing should allow you to film all day without the need for external power in the form of a power bank. It's all metal too and very solid. It has the usual 20mm Picatinny mount, which on this model isn't quick to attach. Be careful with the mount screws. You can undo them too far, they will fall out, and they will disappear into another dimension, never to be seen again. You've got the familiar record switch there, and you'll recognise this from the Run Cam Scope Cam 2. And these three buttons here we'll take a look at in a bit. What zoom magnification does the Run Cam Plus have then? The Run Cam Plus has an optical zoom from one times all the way up to 10 times. This is achieved with tiny motors moving the lens. And this is a first for a dedicated scope cam. That's not all though. The Runcam Plus has a digital zoom capability of 40 times magnification. Yes, you heard me right, 40 times. But remember, with digital zoom, you will lose picture quality. So how about the video quality then? Well, the advertised resolution seems to be 2.7K. But if you go into the slow motion settings, there is a 4K option there. Let's take a look at the settings on the camera. We can press this middle button here, hold it down, and it will turn on the Runcam Plus. And then we've got the one above that is your zoom button. So you can keep your finger on that or you can press it in increments as well. And the one below that is your zoom out button. So while it's turned on, if you want to go into the menus, you hold that button down and you can either select Wi-Fi so you can connect it to your mobile device, power off, or we're going to go into the menus here. Top of the list there is the resolution, so let's go to the resolution. I've got it set to 2.7K, 60 frames a second, 4 to 3, but there are your other um, resolution settings, and you can navigate through those by pressing the up and down, which you would press for the zoom. So again, hold it down to go back, and then we've got flashback there, so you can set this to flashback, so when you press record, it will capture, I think, the last 5 to 15 seconds it's advertised, of uh, footage. I'm not really a fan of this, I prefer to keep recording all day, I don't want to have to rely on that. You can also get the pressure switch that attaches to the camera, goes into the USB port, so you can press a pressure switch if you want to use that flash flashback feature. Below that we have image rotation, so I'm on zero degrees now, so it's mounted on top of the barrel, so um, if you want to mount it underneath, you can select 180 and it will save you editing it and uh, rotating it in your editing software. There we have effects. So I've left it on normal. You can have black and white, green or negative. Might come in handy for what you want to use it for. Green might be interesting for like some night vision look footage maybe. Below that we have loop recording. Now I believe loop recording will be where it fills your memory card up and then it will start to overwrite once your memory card is full. Record volume will allow you to adjust the sound on your video recording. You've got three settings there, one to three, or you can turn um, sound recording off altogether. Date stamp will imprint the date or the date and time on your footage. I'm gonna leave that turned off. Not entirely sure what the slow motion setting is, whether it's gonna use a higher frame rate, I don't know, maybe it will unsure of that one because I know that the advertised frame rate is only 60 frames a second so whether this slow-mo setting will will up the frame rate somehow oh we've got 720p there look strange so yeah maybe there's a higher um, frames per second setting that you can use in the slow motion setting so then below that we've got fast motion so I guess this is going to speed your footage up for why you may want to speed your footage up I don't know, not sure how this is gonna work. So you can speed it up two times, five times, or 10 times. Okay, cross cursor is your crosshair. Um, let's go into that. I've got mine turned off. I tried and I couldn't get the red or the green crosshairs to appear in my footage. I could only get a white crosshair to appear. 
and that seemed to be only when I turned on the date stamp. And it's worth noting too that I couldn't get the date stamp to appear either. Screensaver. So with the screensaver, it determines how many minutes before the screen will turn itself off when you're recording. Auto power off is just that, so the camera will power itself off when it's not recording uh, with a set amount of time. I'm going to leave mine turned off. I've got a vibration motor there, so I'm going to leave mine turned on. It gives you a vibration alert, which you can feel on the rifle, which means you've started recording, stopped recording when the battery's dead. I don't think it vibrates when the battery is getting low on power. Format, so there you can format your SD card on the camera. It's like this autofocus data clean. Not 100% sure what this does. Let's tell it no. I guess if you're having trouble with the camera focusing, maybe you can clear the data, but we'll just say no for now until we run into a focus problem. So language, you can change your languages of the menus. Let's leave it on English. Uh, reset, so you can reset the camera to the default settings. And there is the firmware version that I'm using right there. So there we go, there are your menu settings. Um, very handy indeed to be able to adjust all those. Very easy to use, very easy to navigate through. So now if we want to connect to our mobile device via Wi-Fi, hold the button down there and we'll select Wi-Fi. And it gives a vibrate. And now the Wi-Fi is ready to go. So now we're connected to my mobile device and as you can see you've got all the settings on here, exposure, saturation, uh, ISO, shutter, contrast, sharpness, white balance, flip screen, brightness, metering and uh, on the screen is a preview, we've got a preview of my workshop which is a bit blurry because it's really zoomed in. Another nice little touch on the app as well, if you're going to be using the crosshair in your footage you can press just here and it gives you the ability to change the location of the crosshair to pretty much zero in. Can the Runcam Plus be used instead of a sight or a scope? Well, in my opinion, not really. The screen is far too small and it's hard to see in sunny conditions. Okay, let's have a sound off then. You can hear my voice right now on the Sony Alpha camera that I'm recording on. I'm about two feet away from the cameras. I'm gonna count up and uh, change the audio for each camera individually. So you're gonna hear a bit of ambient noise in the background. There's all sorts of noises from birds to eating to machinery moving. All right, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, so what do I like about the Run Camscope Cam Plus? The record time of just over six hours is amazing. And if you do need to record longer, the ability to record and charge with an external power source is there. The versatility. This is one scope cam for all. So whether it be up close and personal CQB is your thing, or long range sniping, the option to be able to change the amount of zoom you require is fantastic. Something I'm extremely pleased to see is 2.7K 60 frames a second with a 4 to 3 ratio. Now this gives a resolution of 2720 by 2040. How many times have we looked back at our scope cam footage to find that the BB is too low or too high in the footage? Now with 4 by 3 ratio, now you've got the option to reframe it if you're exporting to a 16 by 9 ratio. The ability to change settings without connecting to a Wi-Fi device is a game changer. Very handy indeed. Now, the next one is a pro and a con. I was out in the rain for pretty much two hours straight with the Scope Cam Plus. It got soaked and it continued to work and still continues to work. However, the footage was unusable due to the lens protection fogging behind the glass. Once it fogged, there was no way to clear it. I ended up switching in the afternoon for another camera as the Scope Cam Plus was unusable. Was this just a problem because of the heavy rain or will the issue reoccur on cold days too? A big problem I had with the Scope Cam Plus is when you stop recording, the zoom setting will reset back to one time zoom. So each time you start recording again, you must remember to go back to the required zoom. Otherwise, you'll end up with shots like this and you'll be extremely annoyed like I was when I got home and realized that this had happened. The size. Now I understand the need for the size due to the large internal battery and its complex lens system, but it really is a beast and it can look a little bit out of place on some rifles. Would I change anything on the Scope Cam Plus? I imagine some of the 3D printing guys out there will come up with something, but I think the Scope Cam Plus is crying out for a sunshade, not only to stop any lens glare, but also to prevent raindrops getting on the glass 
and protection from BBs coming in at an angle. I understand that Sunshade has potential for being in the shot at lower zoom levels, but an optional one for use at higher zooms would be great. Here's what I made earlier to keep the rain off the lens. This flappy thing here, I get it, it's to protect the lens when the camera's not in use and when you're storing the camera. But when it's in use, it's just ugly and it gets in the way with the potential to be accidentally knocked and block the lens. I've just taken it off and I keep my Scope Cam Plus in a sock, a clean sock. I do hope in the future that Runcam can maybe get more field testing time done to iron out some of the niggles with the camera before release. I am looking forward to using the Scope Cam Plus in the future though. The Runcam Scope Cam Plus retails at $289 from the Runcam website and you can find the link in the description below. If you'd like to know more about the rifle that I'm going to be using the Scope Cam Plus on, the video is on the screen now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.